not the case that there's a physics that just exists and we are merely the recipients of that physics that exists. What exists in general is this whole Rouillard and the, our, the slice that we perceive, we perceive because we have the, the methods of perception that we have. Now, in terms of consciousness, I, I have to say, you know, the idea that there's sort of something magic that goes beyond physics that leads to sort of conscious behavior, I kind of think that LLMs kind of put the final nail in that, in that coffin. Because I kind of think that, you know, the, there were all these things where it's like, oh, it could, maybe it can't do this, but actually it does, and it's just an artificial neural net. I think our notion of consciousness is a lot related to the fact that we believe in the single thread of experience that we have. It's not obvious that we should have a persistent thread of experience. You know, in our models of physics, we're made of different atoms of space at every successive moment of time. So the fact that we have this belief that we are somehow persistent, that we have this thread of experience that extends through time, is, is not obvious. It's something that, um, that, that, you know, just happens to be the case. I kind of realized that probably when animals first existed in sort of the history of life on Earth, that's when we started needing brains. If you're a thing that doesn't have to move around, the different parts of you can be doing different kinds of things. If you're an animal, then one thing you have to do is decide are you going to go left or are you going to go right. There's a single decision you have to make. And I, I kind of think it's a little disappointing to feel that this whole vaunted thing that ends up being what we think of as consciousness might have originated in just that very simple need to decide if you are an animal that can move.